could, I, could I ask a question? What, yeah. what, um, what, why, why do you think e-learning or technology hasn't been adopted in schools? Because um, the, the, the sort of transformation or whatever you want to call it, uh, although the technology surrounding the, the schools just, just doesn't seem to happen. Go over to the laptop because I, I don't think that's true. I think, oh. um, I think yeah. I, so I run this, um, I run this event in um, all around the world. Would be very afraid, which is run Lisa by Wesley. She's here somewhere. Um, I've been running this for, for ten years, and um, there we go. We might get the audio from here as well, guys. I think in a second. So. Here's, um, I'll use this. So here we were, this was um, uh, a Minister of Education and his um, permanent secretary asked me this question more than 10 years ago, exactly your question. And I said, no, I think, I think they're doing extraordinary stuff. I think the systems haven't reflected that. I think what's happening at the classroom level and in classes really is showing a lot of break, not in all schools, but in, but in many, many. And I'm just going to pick you out three or four, I'll build my little a little thread really through the 10 years of being very afraid give you a sense of that of that change so here's the um this group of children in um back a decade ago and um at school we have been doing an hour hang on we started this because um some children in our class didn't know what a noun was or an adjective was. So we decided we'd make up little racks so we could help find it. And it's worked pretty successfully because boys are now running around in the playground singing the song. And whenever we're asked what is a noun, um, we're like, So this was um, a decade ago, girls worried about boys not being very good at grammar and thinking they, they could do something about it and uh, <laughs> I love the way they try not to say boys, they say some children in their class and the B word comes out you know. and so they've written a rap about parts of speech and they're delighted because the boys are going around the playground singing singing the song. So you know that, that mantra, that what, what does technology do for us here? Te technology helps people to help each other, bubble notes. Uh, and you see that here, so uh, a, a little bit further off. Onto year three. And uh, here's a group of children in Essex who were worried about healthy eating, which is it, it's now a big issue. This was a, many years ago, so they've seen it coming. This is what they were doing about it. children helping people to help each other but the help each other is now including the teachers in a really interesting sort of way so as we get a bit later in that as we get a bit later in the sequence um, we get to something like this and this is um, these are a group of children these are a group of children in a in a classroom we built outside of West London as part of this project in the classroom of tomorrow and they're just going to talk about this was a, a great big fiberglass classroom with Dalton Prince, it's a cool place and they're just going to talk briefly about what it's like to learn in that space but what you'll hear is a changing relationship between the children 
and the teachers, again, I've just played little snippets, this is all on the website, but um, some of you I know are familiar with it. Ingenium, and this is what our project is about, and it's basically a classroom, it's called Classroom of the Future, and it's in our school, it's like an ordinary classroom, but it's much bigger and it's much more spacious and it's a lot different in, one, in some ways, but even though we still have ordinary everyday lessons inside it. Basically, students were asked what kind of learning environment they would like to work in, and that's what they came up with. So you've got the wide open doors, you've got the colour, you've got all the space, and you don't get the teacher-student barrier anymore. It's kind of broken down and they work together, whereas in classrooms the teacher's telling you what to do and you're reading from a textbook. This is more you discover your ideas and you're learning in your own way and the team, like, students can adapt to it so well. It's a better environment to learn in and you're more open and confident and you're learning from each other as well as, well as you know, the internet or books. So what, what you hear there is is a change in relationship. They're not, they've started off helping each other, but then they've helped others. Now they're working in, in, in consult, in collaboration with their teachers to build new sorts of learning. And this is all over a 10, 12 year period. I'm just going to jump on to the end and show you just where, so where are they today? Um, and of course this isn't every school. So, you know, some children have seen the train leaving the station and they've got on the train with their teachers. Others stood on the platform and thought, well, maybe catch the next train. And um, um, I don't know what happens to them. That's a separate debate we'll, we'll have. Some of those teachers are country students. But so where are we now? If I just jump to um, not now Kings Road Primary, who were actually connecting through to our children earlier today. and. Um, Listen to what the teacher's saying now. Because he's now learning actively from the children. My name is Jonathan Finesse. I'm from Kings Road Primary School in Chelmsford, Essex. We're a large primary school based in um, a very mixed social economic region. Last year, we've been studying the Gambia. And one of my pupils used Google Earth in the classroom and it suddenly dawned on him that he could actually contribute to that map himself. Schools all across the world are using Google Earth. This is not new, but what they've discovered is that you could use that very simple technology in a very innovative way, in a way that allows them to be empowered in sharing what they know with somebody else. They've inserted their own photographs, they've put text, but you can also build panoramic views of locations and take video footage and add that into the software itself. So the teacher here is describing is what he's learned from the children. It's really interesting, isn't it? Oh, we didn't expect that to happen. You hear that in his description, the children are learning from each other and he's learning from them. What the teacher's done is to set the ambition, let's build the project, but let's see how good we can make it, and in that space, see how far and fast the children can go. And for me, that's been the impact of technology. And I just want to jump out of, um, out of the website to um, so this image, which is, so now we've taken being very afraid, it's going out around the world, we ran it in Melbourne um, this year, and here were the children in Melbourne. And this was really interesting, because these four children had decided that they were going to learn to play musical instruments. And they set themselves a month, and they were going to learn from the internet, they were going to learn from YouTube, and from lessons online, and any resources they could find. And when they got to Be Very Afraid, which is the, what we call the event every year, they were going to play um, three, three songs. They were going to play as a band, live. And I took this photograph um, with my camera and said, wow, you guys are terrific, you know, after only four weeks. And they said, oh, no, hang on. Let's show you how good we are with our own instruments. This was them. This is when jamming with each other's instruments. So let's go back to the ones we've taught ourselves in the four weeks and really see how good we were. And uh, I was astonished. You know, I, mean, I was impressed with the ones that their second instrument that they'd learned in the, in the four weeks. So where did they get those resources from? This secondary school. This is a primary school. They found secondary school materials and they'd say. Okay, um, you know, this is we can learn from this. But this is upper secondary school material being used by primary school children intensively in four weeks. So I think it raises the real question, the question that technology has posed for us, 
really significant is how good might our children be? And, and the big impact you see, places that have adopted technology have stood back and said, okay, let's find out together. Places that are nervous of it have gone for locking and blocking. We're so terrified of how good our children might be, let's stop them. Now, I don't think that's a sustainable position. I don't think our children will be patient enough to stop. So if we stop them here, they'll perform over there. And many of you, I think, have seen what happens when schools lock down. The children just pop out here and do extraordinary stuff like this. And uh, for me, what, I mean, there was a 13-year-old a child that would be very afraid in Melbourne who was bored in maths. He said, I'm fed up with waiting for the other children in the class to understand the stuff that I know. So he thought, what do I do about that? I know, he said, I'll write myself, I'll write an iPhone app that teaches maths. So he wrote an iPhone app to help his classmates out with the maths that they were struggling to understand so he could go faster. I'll tell you, it's a good little app uh, and it's out there in the iTunes store. You know. So, you know, I, I think the big question here is how, not how good would we like our children to be, but how good might they be? And that's a question I think nobody's started to, to address here.